so much culture and history to be found when you travel through these old gold mining towns. And here at Woods Point, when you get under the surface, it's rich in history. The Woods Point Goldfield was one of the most significant minefields in Australian history. It extended from Jamison in the north to Walhalla in the south. After more than 100 years of mining, its gold yield totaled 155 tonnes. 20% of this was produced by the Morning Star Mine between 1861 and 1963. The town began as a general store built by Henry Wood to service the gold diggings around the recently discovered Morning Star Reef. Woods Point Post Office opened on the 1st of December in 1862 and by 1864, only three years after the discovery of the gold reef, the area had become a thriving town with 36 hotels. There is a wealth of information to be found and the Woods Point Museum managed by Barb and Des Miller holds a wealth of information dating back to the mid 1800s. That's an amazing collection you've got here. Have you found it difficult to resource all the photos and things you've got here? Well, once we've uh, started the museum, I think a lot of the old people knew there was something and they felt a pride and something to come to. We've ended up becoming very close friends. And how old would the, the museum here be at which point? Uh, I suppose it would be approximately about 16, 17 years now. Yeah. It was going to be um, virtually in, in a bad state. We thought we could uh, run it as a pictorial museum because we had a lot of photos and, uh, and we ended up getting the 150th grant and the councils helped and uh, we had a lot of volunteer workers that's, that's helped and did things cheap so yeah it's been excellent. Now at the back of the museum there's this beautiful walk that follows the banks of the Goulburn River and over this bridge leads to a nice little picnic ground and the old Chinese gardens. And on the side of this mountain is one of the finest examples of Chinese terrace gardens dating back to the early 1800s where they grew their vegetables. Now seriously, just look how steep that is. So Dusty, has Woods Point ever been affected by any major bushfires? Oh, in 39, it got totally wiped out. Um, they had one early, about 18, 1880s, it was part wiped out, but uh, 39 was the worst. What completely took the whole town away? Oh, it was about five places left. Some places were saved, but folks just throwing buckets of water on, but most of it went. When the 1939 fires came through Woods Point and burnt the town to the ground, 15 local members from town and their children came to this old mine. At the end of the day, it saved their lives. I reckon the fireballs were just uh, coming over the hill and landing right in the town. Yeah, it's quite horrific for a lot of people. When the 1939 fires came through the cemetery at Woods Point, most of the graves were marked with wooden crosses. They, along with most of the official records, were destroyed, leaving many of the graves today unmarked and unknown. Following the devastation of the 1939 fires, the residents were faced with the daunting task of rebuilding. From the ashes, a new smaller settlement arose, and much of Woods Point you see today dates back to the 1940s. So has it been restored back to what it was? No, different times. Um, you're in a different era, you're in um, where things got built, um, well, Art Deco style, totally plain I suppose. This walk that's out the back of the museum along the Goulburn River is this stone wall that Dusty handcrafted himself over a period of about 12 years. It's around 300 metres long and the reason why he's built that, because every time the river would flood, it would wash the bank away. How's the attention to detail? So Dusty, what's it like living in town at Woods Point? Nirvana. It's God's country. So when travelling through Woods Point, make sure you drop into the museum, say good day to Barb and Darcy, and let them take you on a journey back in time. If you want to get a bird's eye view over the town of Woods Point, you've got to come and walk this track. It leads to Dusty's Point Lookout, and I promise you won't be disappointed. From up here, the view looks out over the township of Woods Point to our next location, the Commercial Hotel. Back in its day, there were around 36 hotels or sly grog shops scattered all over the valley. But today, only the Commercial Hotel still remains. Darrell, how long have you had the pub here in Woods Point? Three and a half years now. I was working here for about a year and a half before we 
purchase, so tell him my wife. And before that, the gentleman that owned it was Don Woods, who owned it for 48 years until we bought the freehold off him. And how old would this pub be? Roughly 70 years of age. So yeah, burnt down in 1939. It was rebuilt in around 40, 41 from, from memory, yeah. Would have been a fairly central meeting point during the gold rush days. It was, yeah. All the alluvial gold that they would have panned out of the Goulburn River, which is only 100 metres over there, and all the way through to Walhalla, down to Jamison, all on this main fault line, I suppose, through to the Beaconsfield over in Tasmania, were all on that one fault line. So, yeah, there was a lot of people up here chasing chasing gold in the heyday, yeah, and, and still doing it. That's how I ended up here diamond drilling out at the A1 mine about yeah, seven years ago. We, we done some drilling out there, it was all good, so I was eating and drinking in the hotel here every night and then as it turned out, me and my wife ended up purchasing it off old Don Woods so, and it's been good ever since, yeah. This old Shell garage is no longer in use. It closed down in 2007 and today, it's probably one of the most photographed petrol stations, this side of the Black Stump. So Darren, with Woods Point being so isolated, do you get a lot of people still coming through? Yeah, majority uh, motorbikes and four-wheel drives and that from sort of Easter onwards when it starts getting obviously cold and there's a bit of snow getting around here. First sign of snow, the phone goes off its head, they're all ringing up wanting to know if it's snowing here, but you can't see the top of the mountain from here, but yeah, you can usually tell by the vehicles coming in town if they've got snow dropping off from in the main street. Our busiest time is during the winter. It's we're choppers here on on a Saturday night. Everyone wants a Saturday night. It's a bit far to get up here on a Friday night straight out of Melbourne. We've got a drying room out the back for the dirt bikes to hang all the gear up. They're usually just wet as a shag, with snow dripping off them and freezing. So they have a hot shower, come down here, have a cold beer and a good meal. So you've got rooms upstairs where people can stay? Yeah, we can put roughly 25 people in upstairs and uh, yeah, a couple of cabins. Usually have a fully cooked breakfast on a Sunday morning. Yeah, so no, it's a good little spot. Plenty of fishing, plenty of four-wheel driving. You can pretty much drive from here to the coast and you, you, you know, you're know you not going on the main road nearly almost. Yeah. The, the shed crew from down near Geelong, they'll come up here uh, yeah, every year, the same weekend. They've had a book for like 25, 30 years. And, and their kids are coming up here now with their kids and just, it just keeps going and going. So. so when you come into Woods Point and you finish looking at all the historical sites, come to the commercial hotel, say good day to the locals, book a room upstairs and ask them about their big breakfast. And if you don't mind, I'm going to get into this.